let's uh, start again. Um, so, what is? I, I try to show you that uh, with uh, with Deleuze, the idea is that uh, is not to interpret the situation, but just to follow them. Right? In other words, they talk in terms of uh, cartography. Uh, you make a cartography situation, so it be what they call schizoanalysis. It's following the flows. What you call cartography that you have to map out the various the, the, the various lines that are involved in a given situation and what kind of capacity they are, what, what kind of etc. So again, uh, the newness in relation to psychoanalysis is that there is no need for interpretation, right? And that's kind of difficult to to accept in general because uh, any sort of uh, analysis means, in that case, analysis of the composition of an assemblage but not what the assemblage means. Right? Uh, it's not, there's no judgment that's been made for it, but it's only in terms of uh, what, uh, what is the capacity for this to create more complexity and, and, and uh, to maintain uh, multiplicity as opposed to, uh, to, to unity. Right? Even when you have an element of uh, unity that intervenes in an assemblage, uh, you could, in a way, try by taking an assemblage where the, the, the unity threatened to coalesce the assemblage into a structure, you can take away one and let the other recompose itself. There's a text by, uh, by Deleuze on uh, the Italian uh, dramaturg uh, Carmelo Bene. Hmm? And Carmelo Bene wrote, uh, we talked about uh, Richard III the other day, right? And Richard III is all centered on Richard III, the character of the traitor, etc., etc. And what Camilo Bene did was take away the, the character of Richard III and let, uh, and, and let the, rewrite the, the, the play without the major character, right? So that suddenly the state, if you want, you know, the, the, the major power disappears, then everyone, a new assemblage is made just by moving one element, by withdrawing one element, by adding one element. But it's not just one element that you change, but the whole configuration, like a, in the kaleidoscope. Right? So what Deleuze Guattari suggests to do is uh, make cartographies, make, uh, make, uh, make uh, evaluation of situations, not in terms of judgment, but how much power is there that's contained or that could be liberated. Right? Okay, so uh, uh, that doesn't exclude some element of, of psychoanalysis, but it is not the, the main the main purpose of a schizoanalysis to uh, interpret things, to to go back to a situation, to establish a, a, a history of a character, right, or, or a patient. The patient is always in the present, so it, it could be history in the present again. In a present configuration, what can you do? In order to unlock the the the, the, the symptom uh, to uh, to uh, open up um, other lines etc etc so that you leave the the causes behind there is no connection between cause and effects right there is no linear uh, li linear connection between the two uh, there is a uh, there is a, a continuum of causes which may never have been connected to effect and there is a, a continuous continuum of effects among themselves right? that they don't have to, to be assigned to any cause and that's also very Nietzschean. Right? So it's a recourse to another logic and to another conception of history and uh, that's what it is. You know? There's no, uh, no interpretation of it to, to be done but uh, an evaluation of in, a, in constant movement, right? Now, of course, uh, you could say that uh, that something like Deleuze and Guattari come up with constitute also one of the possible of capitalism, right? Because capitalism doesn't have any memory. Capitalism constantly reinvents itself according to a situation. Capitalism always seizes on opportunities without having to rewrite the history behind. So the danger is that Thomas Guattari could say get as close as possible to the very movement of capitalism. Uh, that's why someone like Zizek uh, could uh, recently uh, write a text uh, against Thomas Guattari by, uh, by saying, well, 
you know, this is just consumerism. You know, there's partial objects and, and flows, and you know, there's no difference between the Lesbote and capitalism. The, the, uh, it is true that uh, we are very close to it, but it's only because we are very close to it that we could try and change its course. Right? In a sense, what happened in May 60, after May 68 with the French theory is that they realized that they, they couldn't turn towards any sort of a, a class in order to, uh, to, to, to effect any change in society. So the only alternative they had was to, uh, to try and make an alliance with capitalism. Now, instead of trying to, uh, to fight capitalism by a class struggle, they, they said, okay, let's, let's embrace capitalism, but uh, also try to uh, redirect it constantly by adding uh, other lines that he wouldn't be able to take, right? Or by stopping when it goes on, the, when it re re territorializes, when it deterritorializes, constantly reinventing strategies that are pretty close you know, to the body of the capital, right? That constantly uh, uh, dismembering. Uh, the, the forces that capital uh, uh, unleashes, right? So, uh, as soon as you, if you look at, uh, at Deleuze and Guattari from a point of, from a point of view, uh, uh, from, from a vertical point of view, you, you could very well say that Deleuze and Guattari is in just another form of capitalism, you know, because it gets so close to it that it's constantly trying to differentiate itself from it, to transform differences in singularity, to uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, weaken a hard opposition into subtle one, to uh, trust uh, abstract lines, to go and help it go in a certain direction uh, where capitalists wouldn't go. It's, uh, it's some sort of a last resort. Right? Capitalists has invaded the whole picture and you can't just try to topple over. Right? You basically have to uh, embrace it and that makes it an embrace a death embrace, if you want, right? Okay. This is so. In this way, they are parallel to to to, to Baudrillard, but they are also opposed to it. Baudrillard tries, on the on the other hand, to uh, to turn the hard line into some uh, some hard line of a challenge. Right? It's not the binarism. It is a, it is a duo, right? But both of them are the ex they are in both extremities the way. Uh, symbolic exchange is at the other extremity uh, than, than, uh, than the, the, semiot the semiosis of capital. Uh, the, you know, another thing that the Lesbian thing would share with capitalists is the fact that they, they don't account for death. Right? You know, with vitalism, you always embrace death, uh, embrace life in whatever situation. Death is always an accident that will occur but that you don't have to try to uh, include within, within the, the flows, right? Uh, death can always happen biologically, death can always be produced by a system, but they always try to find any alternative to the possibility of death. Yeah. So they could be criticized for it because it's a very uh, positive, uh, hands-on, pragmatic, experimental, uh, creative attitude in relation to society. Right? But at the same time, they, they, they refuse to any sort of interpretation, even that of the death wish that Baudrillard found so essential for, for his own uh, 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 strategies. Right? For Deleuze and Guattari, death wish is, not something, is, is something that's been created by a certain composition of forces. Right? In other words, if you don't give people a choice, they will choose death. But that is not, a, not something that, that has to be chosen. Right? It can be instilled in a society as, as, a, as a German society on, on the verge of a defeat, you know, when the German society could very well surrender, but uh, Hitler tried to, to tell the population, just don't surrender, try to fight and, 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 and to, the, to the very end. Right? And uh, uh, those who couldn't do it, he advocated suicide. Right? So basically it was a... It was a, a, what uh, fascism liberated at the same time as nationalism was a wish, a death wish. And that's what was described there from the beginning. As I said, since uh, fascism could only rely on war, hmm, on racism, and inflicted on, on, on certain portion of the population and outside 
on population who's, uh, who are supposed to be destroyed uh, through technology, that was there from the very beginning. See? Uh, they were, um, that was embraced also by futurism, out of which uh, grew uh, a certain form of uh, or model of, uh, of fascism. So, those good, in whatever you would say, we don't have to talk about that because that is always the last resort. You know? That's what happened to Deleuze when Deleuze lost his two lungs and he, did, you know, he, he, did, he realized that he, he couldn't function, he could only uh, spend you know, half an hour a day to, to, to do some writing. It was too painful to, to do anything. All he could do was to listen to music. Then when no one was here, he threw himself through the window. And that's how he killed himself. But the killing itself was not uh, something, uh, I would say, reactive. It was some sort of a, you know, philosophical, de philosophical decision that there was nothing else he could do at this point if he wanted to have a life that would be rich enough to, be, to deserve to be, to be lived. Without, uh, you know, when the composition of pain and life uh, is such that uh, life isn't desirable anymore, then he just decided, you know, in a kind of a philosophical way to end his life, right? So, that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a kind of theory that it is. 